uh, recording the new space and uh, I just wanted to show you the main kind of inspiration for my intros. Um, it's a book I found from a while back. Okay, welcome to this video. Um, today I wanted to look at the Mark IV from Mesa Boogie, which is quite a complicated amp. I think probably one of the more complex amps to dial in on the HX Stomp or the Helix. I thought it might be interesting if we got the manual out and had a look at what Mesa Boogie had to say about the amp and their advice for dialing it in and uh, see what we can learn from that. So we've got three channels in the Mark IV. We've got the Rhythm 1, Rhythm 2, and Cali 4 lead. Let's just start off with Rhythm 1 then. According to the manual, Rhythm 1 is where you'll find your kind of clean tones all the way from funk to blues and stuff like this, supposedly. So they advise that all the way up to 8 it should stay relatively clean. So let's just check that out. Yeah, and that seems... And then I guess probably with humbuckers you'd be getting a bit more there, but let's then chuck it to nine and see what that gives us. And we're kind of on that edge. Okay, so that's worth knowing I guess. So Rhythm 1, if you're looking for clean Mesa Boogie, is the place to look. And it says to use the master to control essentially the volume. So we can take this all the way down I guess and then we could use the channel volume as well. And that will give us a really sparkly clean tone, hopefully. And we can bring that treble up as well. I'm going to guess there's going to be some stuff going on here, yeah, so we've got uh, a little bit of EQ going on with the 5 band EQ, so I'm going to turn that off for now, as that seems to be taking out some of the low end, uh, if anything I'd want to be adding that back in if I'm using this kind of clean tone. <laughs> So the most powerful control in the Rhythm 1 is the treble control and they say to chuck it down in the 0 to 3 range for kind of jazz tones. If I keep it here at about 1. And then you can bring it up further. So between 0 and 3 it kind of recommends for jazz tones. And then the most common settings are between 5 and 7 apparently. So here's 5. Seven. So it's starting to really get quite quite bright there, but I think you probably agree quite a full range of tone even with just the treble control. And they recommend kind of mixing up the presence and treble you know so if you've got the treble high you could try running the presence a little bit lower so the bass and mids will only have a pronounced effect on the tone when the treble is run pretty low 
um, the treble is the most influential control. The bass and mids, the suggested settings are between 0 to 3 on the bass, so. <laughs> And then between four to seven on the mids. So So yeah, let's have some more mids and we'll keep the bass at three. As I say, the presence essentially is just for frequencies above treble, so let's so all the way off. Quite dark. And then. Nice there. So, just to summarize, treble settings between 5 and 7. If you're going for normal kind of tones, between 0 and 3 for jazz, recommended. The gain can stay clean all the way up to 8. And the bass between 0 to 3 and the mids between 4 to 7 is what's recommended from Mesa Boogie. So that's the clean channel. And obviously you can do quite a lot of shaping with the EQ as well. So we could boost the lows, for instance. To move a little bit more air. Yeah, some really cool tones there. So now we'll move on to Cali Rhythm 2. So this is actually kind of the most versatile channel on the Cali 4. So this can do cleans, basically, all the way to really driven tones. So with that drive low, we're going to be getting clean tones. And then if you chuck this up, I'm just going to bring the channel volume and the master down a bit. If we chuck this up, I think you can probably hear what's about to happen. You can get kind of pretty chunky tones out of it. So, let's have a look at what the settings are suggested. So, rhythm two. At a high settings between nine and 10, and with the fat switch pull, we don't actually have the fat. Um, rhythm two produces a maximum gain for crunch and can double as an alternate lead zone. This mode gain falls off quickly as the controls knob is reduced, providing a range of lower gain onset of clip sounds. Yeah, experiment with that. Gonna take off these EQs again. So I think Mesa Boogie recommends starting off with these EQs kind of disengaged before adding them in. They say specifically in the manual that the EQ shouldn't necessarily be essential for dialing in your tones. Um, just see what that is. Like. Okay, right, so let's move through the controls again. As always, the treble control is the most important control here. Setting the treble higher increases the gain of the mode and allows increased distortion and sustain. Lower settings allow the mid and bass controls to become more dominant, adding more to the sound. So if we want higher gain tones, we're gonna to need to run this treble quite high, I guess. And if we we're going to run, run the treble really high, we might want to use the presence to adjust that. <laughs> treble alongside the gain is affecting the amount of sustain and all that stuff, the saturation. And the bass and mids, again, it'll be the same kind of general ballpark as the first rhythm channel where you're advised to keep those bases between zero and three. 
and then the mids between four and seven. I guess that would be getting quite honky. If we... And I guess we could also head over to the EQ section and it says in the manual that the 750 is the most impactful uh, of the EQ sliders. So let's just hear what that does. So boost it by 6 dB. And then if we scoop it by minus 6 dB. So yeah, uh, that's a, a really cool channel actually. I've not really tried that one particularly as you can tell from that little bit of tweaking that I've done there you can get quite a vast range of tones from that um, especially with that drive low down you can get so rather unusually for a Mesa Boogie that channel in particular Mesa Boogie do say you can run that gain all the way up to 10 so uh, a very versatile channel that one so then we'll move on to the Cali 4 lead. This will probably be the one that most of you, myself included, would have actually checked out a bit more. Um, I'm going to go straight to the EQ section and take this off again. Um, I don't think there's any need to start off with that on. So that might be worth doing if you're kind of tweaking and trying to check out the tones of these amps. Best results for lead gain will occur in the 8 range, apparently. We've got two controls for drive. So this lead gain sets up the input sensitivity for the lead mode. The more signal strength dialed in here early in the preamp, the more distortion will be available at the lead drive control. Yet it is not necessary to turn the lead gain fully up. So that's from Mesa Boogie. You don't necessarily have to run this all the way at 10 to get plenty of gain. So best results will occur with settings in the 8 range. As you approach a gain of 7, the lead sound will become extremely focused, rich and smooth. Above 8, total saturation occurs, reducing the effectiveness of the tone controls and causing increased microphonics and noise in the preamp tubes. The lead treble should be worked with the presence to produce the desired gain and brightness. Setting the treble higher increases the gain. And the lead bass and mid are not hugely influential here, but they add body and warmth without affecting the strength of the signal. Dial these into your liking but too much bass with too high gain will take away from the tight focus sound. It's not necessary or even recommended to run the lead drive all the way up to generate a sound that's fully saturated. So let's try settings between five and seven. So let's just do that now. So five, see what we get. So I'm using a Strat here, by the way. <laughs> That's five, and then let's push it to six. Okay, and then up to seven. Starting to get. Very 
if we increase the lead gain as well up to nine or decrease it supposedly things get a bit more focused so quite sensitive controls these and I guess past kind of eight on the drive you start to get some more spitty kind of stuff all the way up so we could use this treble to get some more gain if we wanted and dial back the brightness with the presence same principles apply basically then for the Cali 4 lead the most important controls are these gain drive and treble controls and if I were you I would go into the to model and turn off the EQ for now um, especially if you're like me and just checking these out for the first time no real need to get in there and go it does specifically say in the manual that you don't necessarily need that EQ to dial in tones uh, it's kind of like a, a thing that you add and improve tones with so maybe start off with it off rather than on because some of the settings from the factory are fairly extreme so that's like my deep dive into the boogie 4 and reading the manual so hopefully that was vaguely interesting to one or two people I'll go and dial in some tones now and uh, put together an intro but I think you can see there's a massive range of tones just in that kind of one amp, the three channels of that one amp can cover basically any kind of music except for maybe crazy heavy stuff you'd need a boost but really versatile amp. So I'll catch you in another video soon, let me know in the comments if you've got favourite settings with the boogie or if there's other amps you think I need to check out, catch you in a video soon, cheers!